next, the next call is a split call. Gareth Hughes, five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If there's one thing, Mr Speaker, that's baffled me in my political career, it's staggering speeches like that, and for some reason the National Party can still, with a straight face, go to the people of New Zealand that they are good economic managers. This is despite all of the voluminous evidence, the staggering amounts of data, and parliamentary contributions like this. This is a quote which will go down in that member's history. I hope he raises it in his valedictory speech. The member said, and he asked this House, what's the difference between investing in property, shares, factories, etc.? He should go and talk to some New Zealand businessman, uh, New Zealand businesswoman, investors, and they might be able to tell him. The difference, of course, is a dollar invested in the house isn't a dollar invested in growing the economy, developing the regions, creating employment. That's a dollar in investing in a house. Now, Mr Speaker, this is what the Green Party wants to see. A prosperous New Zealand that's investing in its own economy, that's investing in factories, that's investing in innovation. But this is the problem, Mr Speaker, and if you look at the data, just this year, an Auckland house, the median Auckland house, is appreciated in value by $100,000. That's more than the average Kiwi can work in a year or two. $100,000. And that's because all the economic signals under this government, under no doubt uh, conscientious members like that, with contributions like that, that's exactly what we'll see. Uh, a New Zealand which is entirely imbalanced when it comes to the economy, uh, people investing and speculating, not investing in productivity. I was going to criticise the member also for not talking about the speech and talking about other parties, so I'd better make sure I actually talk about this uh, bill, which is the Taxation Residential Land Withholding Tax, GST and Online Services and Student Loans Bill. We, we do need an acronym for this one. So it's got three main parts, which my colleague Julianne Genta uh, very competently uh, discussed, such as the Online Purchases Goods and Services Tax, uh, the new Brightline withholding test uh, tax, and then, of course, the new information sharing provisions relating to the student loan scheme. This is the part that I'd like to touch on, Mr Speaker, because this year we've seen some milestones. We've seen an economy underperforming. We've seen uh, the, the rapid, unsustainable, out-of-control housing prices, particularly in Auckland, but other centres as well. But we also passed a milestone, which is $15 billion in national student loan debt. $15 billion is a huge sum. Now, it's not a, it is a... It is a figure on the government's books, written down on bits of paper. But you must remember, this is a figure, like a millstone, worn around the neck of hundreds of thousands of real New Zealanders. Hundreds of thousands of real New Zealanders with their own... Uh, letters in the mail and emails from IRD explaining how many thousands or tens of thousands or in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loan debt they have. Fifteen billion dollars is the real story uh, that Kiwis face. And this bill is all around one side of it, which is how does the Crown uh, access of the information relating to New Zealanders offshore, whether or not they are or not fulfilling their contractual repayment obligations. But this is the problem, Mr Speaker, because when you come to the student loan crisis, that $15 billion, this government is more focused on those token scare tactics, which was the arrest of uh, the single potentially New Zealand resident, offshore resident, from a New Zealand dependency at the border. Uh, of dubious legality, that single act alone. But the fact is the government's focused more on scaring New Zealanders with student loans who are offshore than working out sustainable, pragmatic, practical solutions. Mr Speaker, this government could instead be focusing on uh, making it easier for New Zealanders offshore to pay their student loan repayment obligations. The fact is, I believe carrots work so much better than sticks, and when you see the, the, the real crisis which is affecting New Zealanders with student loans, uh, you have to question yourself whether decades on from the establishment of this scheme, whether there is in fact a better way. And this is what the Green Party stands for, an affordable, world-class, high-quality tertiary education system, more affordable education where the costs of a more educated, prosperous knowledge economy isn't all borne on the shoulders of students, which is exactly what's happening at the moment as the government reduces in real terms funding for tertiary education. 
but also in real terms increases the cost faced by students with their fees by 20 per cent. The Green Party believes in a more affordable world class tertiary education I'm sorry system. to interrupt you, Honourable Member. The time has come for me to leave the Chair. Members, this debate is interrupted and set down for resumption next sitting day. And the House stands adjourned until 2pm tomorrow. Good evening. <laughs>